nice. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and like many of you I get a lot of parcels with parts and sometimes people want to pick up stuff from me and if I'm not at home I can pick up my parcel at a pickup station. So it would be cool if people could do the same. So we're building a parcel pickup station. Sometimes I sell stuff online and people don't always want it to get sent to them. Sometimes they want just to come over and pick it up because they live close by. But I can't be home all the time. So what if they would just get an email with a code, go to the pickup box, enter their code and get whatever they bought from me. That would be pretty nice. It's basically the same system like with those uh, pickup boxes that all the big delivery companies nowadays have but we're gonna make an open source DIY version so everybody can build like just one or like a whole system of pickup boxes if they want to. Let's get started. So the main component of a pickup box is of course the box. And I decided to use an electronics cabinet for that. It's made by Schneider Electric, really sturdy. This is used for all the connections and uh, some electronics in industrial settings. So if you would have a factory, then basically all the circuit breakers and all the stuff they need for a certain machine would be mounted in there. It's watertight, it's dustproof, it's basically all that I would want ever in a box. So that is my base. What else do we need? We need a thing that lets me enter in the code, uh, a thing that reads the code and determines if it's right, so a microcontroller. I'm choosing an Arduino Leonardo for the job because I have it. We also need some sort of mechanism that allows the door to be opened only when the correct code is in. And I would also like to know when the door is opened or closed so I can use that for mode selection or basically also check that the door really has opened when it's supposed to for safety and stuff. So the critical part is how do we open and close a latch on the door. Um, there are pre-made parts for this. So I basically I got online, searched for door opening latch solenoid thing and I got one. Uh, they are not very expensive. You can get them between 10 and 20 to 30 euros depending on the make and model. Uh, but all they do is basically they have a solenoid in there that if activated releases the latch and there is also a little micro switch in there that can tell if the door is open or closed. Basically if the latch is inserted then it's registered as the door is closed and you can read that with a microcontroller. Pretty simple stuff. Not so simple stuff, how do we activate that solenoid? Solenoids take a lot of energy to activate and you should always test before you design anything how much uh, is actually needed to activate them. The solenoid in the thing that I bought is rated for 12 volts. I think I could go down to 9 volts. I tried that out on my bench power supply and it does activate but of course it takes more current to activate it at the same time with a lower voltage. So I'm basing my system around 12 volts. And coincidentally, 12 volts is also a voltage that an Arduino can take in over the barrel jack. This is basically my entry point. I use the onboard voltage regulation for the microcontroller, of course, and for all the stuff that I add to it. But I also use the V-in pin to pass that on to my solenoid. So we're having only one power connection for the whole system, 112 volts. And if this relay should activate, it opens the door. Yay! We need to think about how does the user enter the code and how does the machine give feedback about a code that has been entered. My first idea was pretty complicated. Like we're using like some sort of Wi-Fi controller and then there's a QR code on the box. And if you scan that, you get to a web page where you can enter your code and then that is checked and activates the, the, the relay. Yeah, that could work, but it's also like super complicated and I'm not sure if that is what most people would want to use, like logging into an unknown system and stuff. Mm, I'm not sure about that. And I also don't want to expose this thing to the internet because of course it could be hacked. So 
I'm using a simpler version that maybe more of you would be interested in. We're having a keypad where you just enter the digits and some buttons and some symbols to make it more complicated and not easy as like guessable. And we're just using normal LEDs. So for every digit that has been entered, one of these LEDs will light up. And when they have all lit up, then uh, the unit checks the code and then activates the relay if it's correct. And if not, then it goes back to its normal state. Oh, and also it shouldn't forget the code when it's rebooted and stuff. Oh, we have to think about a lot of stuff in hardware and software. I'm gonna start with the hardware. Let's go to the computer to KiCad. This is the whole schematic for the shield that goes on top the Arduino Leonardo for this project. Doesn't look very complicated. That's because it isn't very complicated. So here we have the pins of the Arduino, the standard Arduino layout. You can tell I started this KiCad schematic with the template for an Arduino Uno shield. Here we have the LEDs. They are all controlled by their own pins. This is the button matrix. You can see we use four rows and four columns to form a matrix and each one of these buttons has a diode on it. And that makes sure that if we press one of these buttons, we don't get ghost presses, like by coincidence, some of them lining up and for the computer, it looks like another line is also activated. So this allows us to get each individual button push without false positives. This is the input for the door sensor, which is only opening and closing. So if it's closed, then this pin will go to ground. If it's open, it's pulled high. And here we have our output segment. This is where we connect the solenoid and it's connected in between VCC, which is in our case 12 volts, and ground if this activates. This is a solid state relay, and this is a mechanical relay. I put both into my schematic, so if one doesn't work, I can populate the other on my board. Uh, just in case I understood something in the datasheet wrong, I use the new part and also have a fallback to a part that I have already used and know it works. We also make sure that we have uh, we don't overload the pin for driving this relay coil. So there's a resistor in between. And that is basically it. Everything else is in software and done on the Arduino. Looking at the physical layout, we have the button matrix here. We have the LEDs on top. And on this side, we have our inputs and outputs. The power will get over the barrel jack into the system and is internally divided by the Arduino for the 3.3 volt uh, power for the microcontroller and for the logic stuff and 12 volts for the relay. If you look at that in 3D, you can see here are the buttons, here are all the LEDs and each LED corresponds to a digit in the code that we have to enter. So once we have pressed one of these buttons, one of this, these LEDs will light up. And when they all are lighting up, then it will check the code and we see if we have entered everything correctly. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics, and even some new releases just to find out what's inside.
like many times, plans don't always work at the first try, especially if you're like me and didn't read the datasheet correctly. So solid state relays only work with AC on the load side. If you put DC in there, they don't deactivate anymore. Hmm, nice to know. So I'm switching out that solid state relay for a normal relay that works with 3 volt logic levels. I've used that before in the Raspberry Pi Super 8 camera build a long time ago. I still got one of those, so I put that in. Great, I designed that in just in case it wouldn't work as I planned. Then we can activate that relay with our software. Speaking of software, we need software. Let's go to the computer and look at the Arduino code. Welcome back to the computer and to the Arduino IDE. We are developing some firmware for this pickup box and we have to make sure that the codes that we enter are processed correctly, so they are entered correctly, then they match what we expect them, digit by digit, and also in case of a power outage, they, those shouldn't get lost. So. I want to be able to set new codes just on device, no reflashing firmware ever. But I also want to be sure that those stay in there even if I lose power. And that's the main reason why we have to include the EEPROM library. Yes, we store the code in an EEPROM. So these addresses are basically just telling me where in the EEPROM I will store which digit. And just for simplicity, I just number them 0 to 5. We have six digits, zero indexed. I use the Adafruit keypad library for reading the keypad. This is really convenient because we just have to tell it how many rows, how many columns, and then which letter or which symbol or number is on which position on the keypad. And we can use this like kind of physical layout for that, which makes it really easy to understand where stuff has to go. That looks like a pickup box, if I do say so myself, mainly because it says pickup box on here. I decided to paint it in bright colors so people that are looking for the pickup box can actually find it. Otherwise it just would look like an electrical cabinet. We have the keypad mounted on top. I have planned to make a cover on there like an overlay to protect the buttons from moisture but that didn't work out really so I will have to postpone that to another time. But the thing is working, the door is locked so we need to get in and the only way to do that is with the code so let's try this thing out. Ah, nothing in here. But as we can see, I fixed all the cables inside. So the only way to go at the cables is to get inside with the code. Of course, you can break everything, but it wouldn't be like worthwhile digging through this case just to get on whatever is inside. And if you would demount or rip apart this unit on top here, which is actually pretty sturdy, then all you would get is a tiny hole that wouldn't help you get into the unit. Let's try out the setting feature. So you are not fixed to one particular code. You can uh, change that without reflashing the firmware. So when the thing is open, then you are able to place stuff inside, but you're also able to change the code with a master password. The master password is hard coded. So that should be this one. Okay, and it stays on, and that means the master password is correct. And now I enter the new one, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I close it. Okay, and now if I would enter the new password, it should open. And it does. Oh, look at this. I got my order, some resin. A lot of our viewers are proper engineers and they know how to make good relay controls. Not the crude ones that I made. So if you know about flyback diodes and things like that, post your version for a relay control on the Element 14 community. I'm very curious to see your proper solutions to that. 
Anyway, we have learned to use keypad matrices, controller solenoid, and also how to store information that we gather through our device in non-volatile memory on an Arduino Leonardo. Let me know your ideas for future projects on the Element 14 community and download all the files code and CAD for free there. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.